if you would stand with me, please, for our opening hymn, All That Thrills My Soul. We're going to be looking at the 116th Psalm this morning and just a few verses of that, that psalm. You know, we just celebrated uh, Thanksgiving this week. I know for some of us it was a little different uh, plans than what we normally would, would have done on Thanksgiving, but we still celebrated uh, Thanksgiving. But when you think about Thanksgiving, what do you really think about? What comes to your mind when you... When you imagine Thanksgiving, you know, for some it might be uh, the pilgrims and the, the Indians. And for some it's, it's lots of uh, very tasty food that you stuff your face with. And, and then you have to go lay down and take a nap after you get done eating. Uh, for others it is, uh, you know, getting together with, with family and friends and, and just having a, a joyous uh, celebration uh, together. Well, you know, our founding fathers... They had an idea about what Thanksgiving was. When they were putting together all of the rules and regulations for our country, they did not forget about Thanksgiving. And I want to read you just a couple of things this morning. Uh, John Hancock in his Thanksgiving proclamation on October the 5th, 1791. He said, in consideration of the many undeserved blessings conferred upon us by God, the Father of all mercies, it becomes us not only in our private and usual devotion to express our obligation to Him as well as our dependence upon Him, but also specifically to set apart a day to be employed for this great and important purpose. And that was in 1791. 
Well, John Adams, in 1798, he wrote it this way. He said, and I finally recommend that on said day, the duties of humiliation and prayer be accompanied by fervent thanksgiving to the bestower of every good gift, not only for having hereto protected and preserved the people of these United States in the independent enjoyment of their religious and civil freedom, but also for having prospered them in a wonderful progress of population and for conferring on them many and a great favors conducive to the happiness and prosperity of a nation. These founding fathers, John Hancock and John Adams, they were following the great biblical example of giving thanks to God for his blessings. They were using the biblical principles of thanksgiving to tell our country that we need to have a day of sacrifice and a day of confession because they understood very clearly that the United States would not have been a nation had it not been for the hand of God. That the 13 independent colonies that were trying to take on the world's greatest empire uh, in, the, in modern history at that point in time, that they were trying to break loose and they understood that there was no way that this was possible without the almighty hand of God being on the United States of America. And so they call upon us to seek the Lord in thanksgiving. To seek the Lord for what he has, he has blessed us with. Now, originally thanksgiving was not in November. It was celebrated. They called for it in December. Others called for it in April. There was multiple days of Thanksgiving throughout the history of our country. But it was finally settled that Thanksgiving Day was going to be the fourth Thursday in November. And that's when we celebrate it today. But I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about what the Bible says about Thanksgiving in our ongoing series here, what the Bible says about it. We've looked at the family we have, we've looked at what the Bible says about itself. We looked last week at what the Bible says about our need to witness to other people. And this week I want to look at what the Bible says about Thanksgiving. Specifically, I want to look at what the Bible says about the sacrifice of Thanksgiving. And so if you would turn with me to Psalms 116, we're going to look... We're going to really focus on verses 16 through 19 this morning, but I just want to read to you the, the whole psalm. It says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he has inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold of me, and I suffered distress and anguish. And then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has de dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. And in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will call on the name of the Lord. And I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of one of his saints. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. And I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And call upon the name of the Lord. And I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. And in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem... Praise the Lord. So this morning, we're going, to, we're going to look at why we need to be thankful. And we're also going to look at what we have to be thankful for. Because there's a lot of things that we have in our life that we should be thankful. And it should cause us to continually offer the sacrifice of praise and the sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord for what he has done for us. You see there in, in verse 18, it says what? In the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord. He says, I will pay my vows to the Lord. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, that he is going to sacrifice thanksgiving. When you think about that, when you think about, tithe, when you think about sacrifices, for instance, what comes to your mind? 
For some, we go back and we envision the Old Testament sacrifices, the, the blood of the bulls and the, and the lambs and the doves and the, the, the wave offerings and the drink offerings. We, we think about all those things. For others, we think about giving of our tithes and our offerings as a, a sacrifice of sorts. But have you ever considered that the Bible commands us to give a sacrifice of thanksgiving? That there is a sacrifice of thanksgiving that is pleasing to God. In Psalm uh, 50, he says it this way in verse 14 and 15. He says, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and perform your vows to the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. And then if you skip down to verse 23 of, of Psalm 50, he says, This is the one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. To whom who orders his way rightly, I will show him the salvation of God. And so here we have the psalmist in 116. He is saying that he's going to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Then in Psalm 50, it tells us that we need to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Then in Hebrews... Chapter 13, it says, Through him let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And so we have the sacrifice of praise, and we have the sacrifice of thanksgiving. That we are to offer, that the Bible is commanding us to offer up continually, because it is pleasing to God. And so when we think about these sacrifices... I want you to think about what do you have to be thankful for? What do you have in your life to be thankful for? And I'm going to give you, uh, we're going to look at three different things this morning. We're going to look at, at the people. We are going to look at the people in our life. We're going to look at our spiritual life. And then finally, we're going to look at the victory that we have in Jesus. Those are three things that we have to be thankful for. When you think about being thankful for the people in your life. And you look back over your life at all the different people that God has put in it. Some have come and stayed. Others have come for a time and left. Others you have your family. But you have a lot of people that God has put in your life to be thankful for. And you, you think about it this way. Um, have, you, have you ever just sit back and thought about just for a few minutes... If you have godly parents, you have parents that raised you in the faith. Have you thought about what a benefit that was to, to your life? That parents that cared for you and loved you and sacrificed and, and they did these things to help you out. Have you thought about having parents like that? If you do, you have a great gift that you can be thankful for. I know that my parents, I, I am very thankful for them and the way they raised me and, and how from, from the time I, and not only just parents, but we're talking about grandparents as well because I had, I had two sets of grandparents that, that poured into my life and, and that they were willing to, to help me in whatever endeavors that I was in and support me and all of those things. And you think about what they've done for your life. You, you need to be thankful that, that you have people in your life like that. There's another area in your life sometimes we take for granted. We don't think about it like we should, and that is our spouses. That if you have a, a godly spouse, someone that, that supports you and loves you and, and is, is a helper to you, you have a great gift that God has given you. And sometimes we take these things for granted, and we, we're not as thankful for them. But when you look at what the alternative is, not having one of those kind of spouses in your life. People that have it should recognize it. And they should be thankful to God that he has given them. And now you, you, you come back and you look, you've got family and you've got your spouse. But have you thought about all the friends that God has put in your life over the years? And some of these friends, they come into your life. And quite honestly, as you get to, you grow with one another, you get to know one another a little better, they become just like family to you. They become, in some cases, like a brother or a sister. But these friends that God has put into your life, that they come in and they do some things that, that help you out that are unexpected. 
You don't expect some of the things that, that they will do for you in your life. That is a blessing that God has given us, and we should be thankful for those people. And then you have other people in your life that you may not even think about, that you've not really thought about that much. People that are there to help you, but you don't give them a second thought. And you thought, well, well, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about police officers. I'm talking about firemen. I'm talking about teachers. I'm talking about, you know, the, the EMTs and all the other people who are there to help on a daily basis when you need them. We don't think about them in that same way, but we need to be thankful for people like that, people in the military who are serving to keep our freedom. We don't know these people, but yet they are there helping us every day. We have a lot of people in our life to be thankful for, and we should be offering up that gratitude, that sacrifice of praise, that sacrifice of thanksgiving for those people in our life. But, we can also, instead of just thanking God for them, we need to thank them. We need to express our gratitude and our appreciation for the people that are in our life, that are helping us on a daily basis and tell them what it means to us before it's too late. We don't know how long we have on the earth. We can be here today and gone tomorrow. We need to make sure that we're expressing our gratitude and our thanksgiving for those people who mean something to us. All too often, we wait till it's too late. Then there's uh, the people in our life, but then we also need to be thankful for, for our spiritual life. When we look in, in verse 8 of this uh, Psalm 116, we just read it. The psalmist said... For thou hast delivered my soul from death. The writer is thankful that he's still alive. That he had undergone a trial in his life that he thought was going to kill him. But God had spared his life. And so he was eternally thankful to God that he was still walking on the earth. We can be thankful if we are here this morning that God has allowed us to live another day. That we have life in our vein, we have blood in our veins and we have oxygen in our lungs and our brain is functioning at a, a relatively high level. Um, some may be higher than others. But we have the ability to live when a lot of people don't. But there's another thing that we can be thankful for in our life, especially those who understand who Jesus Christ is and have a relationship with him, and that is that we have eternal spiritual life in Christ. You say, well, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, to those who are in Christ. John chapter 1 verse 12 says, but to all who believed, or all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called the children of God. We have a great gift that God has given us, and that is eternal life in Christ Jesus. If we have accepted his gift of love and grace and mercy, if we have asked for the forgiveness of our sins and we have believed on the name of Jesus Christ, then we have 100% eternal life in Christ. And that is one of the greatest things that we can ever have to be thankful for. Because if you do not have Christ, then you do not have a new spiritual life. You have not experienced the new birth. And if you have not experienced the new birth, then guess what? The reality is you are dead in your sins and your trespasses. You are spiritually dead. But Christ came... And this is one of the things that we're going to point to here uh, as, we, as we wrap up this morning and we start marching toward Christmas is we're going to celebrate the fact that, that the spiritual life came in Bethlehem. That God made a way for man to be reunited to him through Christ and it began at Christmas. We have a lot to be thankful for in our spiritual life because spiritual death is a reality for those who do not have Christ. It is an absolute reality that if you do not have Christ and you died today, 
that you would be separated from him forever. But to those who have the new birth, that have become the children of God, John, 1 John 5.11 says this is a testimony that God has gave us eternal life and that life is in his son. And who has the son has life and whoever does not have the son does not have life. We have life in Jesus Christ, and that is something that we should all offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise to God for. And then we have the last thing, and that is the triumph. Paul told the Corinthian church that they ought to be thankful for the triumph, the victory that they have in Christ. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, he says, but thanks to God who in Christ always leads us in triumph. But what do we triumph over? What do we, what do we triumph over? Well, the first thing we triumph over is evil. If you turn and you read all of Romans 7, and I encourage you, if you've never read Romans 7, to read Romans 7. We don't have time to go through all of Romans 7 here this morning. But Paul, in, in Romans chapter 7... He is recounting uh, kind of his life and that natural inclination that man has to sin. Before Christ came in Paul's life, Paul is recounting that natural inclination that he had to commit evil and, and sin in his heart. The attitude that he had in his heart towards sin. And Paul is, is, is showing us very clearly in this passage, the inward struggle that man has with, with sin and weakness in his life. But then he asks a question. Paul asks a question in verse 24 of chapter 7. And then in verse 25, he gives us the answer. In verse 24, he recognizes and he says this. He says, what wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Paul recognized that sin was going to lead to death in his life. And he said, who is going to, that, that sin was reigning in his life. And he recognized that fact. And he said, who is able to deliver me from this body of death? And then he gives us the answer in thankfulness. He said, thanks to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He said, there's only one person that can possibly save, save me from this body of death. And that is Jesus Christ. And Paul says, thanks to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He understood that the only way that he was going to triumph over evil is with through the power of Jesus Christ. That there was no other way that he was going to escape the death sentence for sin in his life except through Jesus Christ. But you say, well, that's, that's great. That Paul has, has recognized that fact. But how do we recognize the fact that we have the victory over evil in our life? Well, there's several different ways. There's several different ways that we can understand how God has delivered us from evil. And the first one is through the new nature that we're given at salvation. We don't have that old nature, that sin nature anymore. That part of the new birth is that we become a new creation and that God has removed that old heart of stone. He's replaced it with the heart of flesh. But he gives us that new nature so that we can then hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now that doesn't mean that we're still not going to sin. It doesn't mean that we're going to live a life that is perfect from here on out. Because we still are in a body of flesh. And so we are therefore drawn to the things of the flesh. And we have to battle the things of the flesh. But God has not left us alone in that regard either. He has given us his word that tells us how we can battle the flesh. It tells us how to live a life that is pleasing to God. And we have to get in and we have to study it and we have to memorize it and we have to, to make sure that we are obeying it and living it out on a daily basis. God has given us a triumph over evil through his word. But then he also gave us his spirit to indwell us and to seal us and to guide us and direct us and encourage us and move us and purify us from, from unrighteousness. 
God has given us all of this so that we can have the victory over evil in our life. And then he gave us the church. He gave us this body of believers to where we can come together and we can lift one another up and we can bear one another's burdens and we can prod and we can push and, and we can help one another be the people that God wants us to be. God gave us a great blessing in the church. We need to recognize and be thankful for that. Not only does he give us the victory and the triumph over evil, he also gives us the victory over Satan. He gives us the victory over Satan. What, does Satan, what is Satan's goal? What is Satan's goal for the Christian? He wants to destroy us. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober-minded and be watchful. For your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Satan is the great enemy of the people of God. He wants to harm us. He wants to destroy us. He wants to maim us. He wants to devour us. And he is an absolute adversary. He's hard to deal with. But you know what? Here's the good news. He's already been dealt with. We don't have to worry about Satan. Because he might, Satan thinks that he's still fighting a battle that he's winning. And he's fighting just as hard today as he's ever fought before. But the problem is he hasn't realized that the war's already over. He's fighting a war that he can't win. He might win a battle here or there, but he's not going to win the war. Why is that? Because Jesus, in his death and his resurrection, has already claimed victory over Satan. And one day... When Jesus returns and he stands on the Mount of Olives, he's going to declare absolute victory. And then they're going to go into the valley of Jezreel and all the armies of the earth are going to come and they're going to be led by Satan. And they're going to, to come into the valley of Jezreel there and they're going to make war against the Lamb and the armies of heaven. Guess what? This is going to be the quickest battle of any war that has ever fought. Because Satan's not going to get his shot off. All Jesus is going to have to do is open his mouth and the devil and his hordes are finished. We already have victory over Satan because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. In James chapter 4 verse 7. He said, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Our job is to resist the devil here on earth because Jesus has already won the victory. We have triumph over Satan. We have triumph over evil. And that is something that we can absolutely be thankful for. That we don't have to fight this battle on our own. That God's already won the victory for us. And so if you think about what we have to be thankful for this morning. We have, well, I haven't even touched on, just, but just a sliver of it. Just three little things. The people that God has put in our life. We've got so many people to be, to be thankful for. And I want to thank Y'all here this morning, um, this church, I know Carla and I have been sick over the last couple of weeks, and, and the phone calls that we've gotten, and the well wishes, and, and people that brought us dinner by the house, I want to say I'm thankful for you for that. Also, that you know we're thankful for this church who comes together to help one another and, and support when, when someone needs something. This church has always been right there to step up to help them. You know, when we said that there were some people that we were aware of that needed Thanksgiving dinners, that we needed to, to help supply them food for, we had every name signed up and ready to go in one Sunday. So there's a lot of churches out there that couldn't get their people to do that. 
They can poke and prod and plead and all those, and their people will not step up. This church does not have that problem. We see a need, we ask that the need be met, and it is met time and time and time again. And that is something that, that I personally, as your pastor, am thankful for. But we have other people in our life that we can be thankful for. We've got our spiritual life, the new life in Christ, that we are not dead in trespasses and sin anymore, but we're made alive with Christ, Ephesians chapter 2. And then we can be thankful that we have victory over evil and we have victory over Satan in our life. We got a lot to be thankful for. And we need to make sure that we express that thanksgiving to God on a regular basis. It is not just one day a year that we express our thanksgiving. It is time and time and time again. We need to make sure that we are not in grace, but that we express our gratitude to God for everything that he has done for us. I read a quote this week. I thought it was a pretty good quote about Thanksgiving. It's saying that Thanksgiving, if you look at kind of a simple definition of Thanksgiving, and they used a, a rose bush as a kind of an illustration about what Thanksgiving is. It said Thanksgiving is, is being thankful that thorns have roses and not the other way around. And so we're going to close this morning. We're going to pray. Uh, and then we're going to have our hymn of invitation. The altar's open. If there's something on your heart, I'll be here in the front to pray with you. If there's something we can do for you. And then Alan's going to come. We're going to sing a couple of verses of our hymn of invitation. Just make sure this morning that we realize and offer that sacrifice of praise. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we do thank you for all that you've given to us for your gift of love and mercy and grace, Lord, that you have made a way for us to be reunited with the Father. Lord, that you took the sin out of the way and made it possible for, for us to have the new, new life in you. Lord, we are thankful for this church. I'm thankful for this church. Lord, I'm thankful for the people that are gathered here today. Lord, what they mean to me and, and what they mean to each other. And Lord, we are thankful that you have won the victory. Lord, that you are the triumphant king. And Lord, we just offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you would please stand for our invitation hymn, I need thee every hour.